Hello everyone and welcome! In this video we're going to be talking about dual mass flywheels and the reason dual mass flywheels exist is actually very similar to the reason that you will see springs inside of clutch discs uh, and this is to reduce torsional vibration through the drivetrain. Now where it's done on clutch discs uh, a dual mass flywheel does it earlier in the process so that vibration never actually gets to the clutch disc itself it's actually within the flywheel before it reaches uh, the transmission and that input shaft. Okay, so how does a dual mass flywheel work? Well, first let's look at all the components involved and then talk about the process of it. So here we're looking at the dual mass flywheel. It gets its name because it has two masses. So we have this first mass, uh, this outer portion as I've drawn here, and this second mass, the inner portion as I've drawn here. And this is a very simple way of looking at it. Of course, there's many more complex ways it can be done, but this is an easy way to understand how it works. So then these two masses, one's going to, need to be attached, the first mass of the flywheel will be attached to the crank, this is what is in blue, and then the second mass uh, will be attached to what is essentially uh, the transmission, so it's going to be the other side of it. Um, so this second mass will be on this side, uh, the blue mass will be on this side, uh, and so as you can see, they can rotate freely from one another, but there's this spring within it. So as this first mass starts to rotate, it's going to start compressing this spring, uh, and so this will be rotating this way, so then that spring will start pushing on the second mass, and then force it to start rotating. But as it gets these pulses, these springs are going to balance that out, so that the second mass doesn't vibrate quite as much so that that vibration doesn't reach the transmission. So if you look at uh, the torsional vibration, now engines don't have a, a perfectly even power delivery. You have power strokes. So if you have a four stroke engine, you're getting one power stroke uh, for every 180 degrees of crankshaft rotation. So these uh, vibrations are what's hitting the flywheel uh, and it has to absorb that vibration. So the first mass will look something like this and then because the second mass has those springs uh, that are absorbing some of that energy and kind of oscillating back and forth, you won't get as much uh, through the second mass as far as vibration. So if you think of it as this is the output uh, from the engine and it's vibrating like this, uh, and this is the input to the transmission, the output is going to be kind of bouncing back and forth with those springs of the engine, and then the input to the transmission is going to be much more smooth. Now, of course, this is all happening while it's rotating, uh, but that's essentially what it's going to look like. And the reason this is done is actually to prevent, as I've mentioned, torsional vibration from reaching the drivetrain. Uh, so what are some scenarios in which you would want to do this? Well, the uh, diesel engines, for example, they have a lot more vibration as they have higher torques. Uh, low RPM engines, so if you're at idle, and you can actually, you know, using a system like this, you might be able to lower your idle speed uh, because you won't have as much vibration reaching the transmission, things like that. Um, even when you do decouple from it, you can, you know, uh, lower that idle speed, so it is one benefit of it. Also, it allows you to use lower cylinder counts, and this is certainly something that the industry is moving towards, uh, using smaller engines and lower cylinder counts as a uh, way of reducing fuel consumption. Um, and so with lower cylinder counts, unfortunately, you have less overlap with your power strokes, and with less overlap with your power strokes, then you're going to have more vibration, uh, you're not going to have as smooth of power delivery, so using a system like this can allow for a smoother drivetrain. The disadvantage can be maintenance. Um, often, you know, when you get a, a clutch uh, replaced with a dual mass flywheel, oftentimes they'll say you have to replace the flywheel as well, and this can be very expensive. Uh, the reason behind that is it's more difficult to machine a dual mass flywheel. It can be done, uh, but oftentimes repair shops will just say, we don't want to try, uh, we'll just swap it out with a new, uh, new dual mass flywheel, and that can be very costly. So they do serve a very valuable purpose, uh, but that disadvantage could be a cost in maintenance. Now, one other thing I did not yet mention is you may find different types of springs uh, within it. You could have a soft spring and a hard spring or a combination of those. Uh, and basically, the soft spring will be done for the lower torques um, and also like starting the engine to reduce that vibration, uh, whereas the hard springs will be used for dampening out those higher torques uh, when you're really matting down the throttle. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.